in this lecture we are going to learn about analyzing algorithms this is one of the very important things when you write one algorithm so you are always asked that okay now you have to find the running time of that particular algorithm okay so the thing is how we will find that one out so this will be the topic for the lecture this we have like we have one algorithm that we write then we have to analyze it how much time it will take okay how much time complexity like how much memory how much time how many resources like how much bandwidth it will take and so on so that will be all discussed in this lecture so we need to analyze time complexity of algorithms and basically that we need to find answer for how much time the algorithm will take how much memory it might take and how much other resources uh, whatever be related to the problem it might take so how how will we find that's the question so one simple solution that can come to our mind is that okay so we are devising algorithm so we can write programs and then it will be something like we execute the code okay so before executing the code i can find the time one the initial time starting time of the algorithm then execute the algorithm then find the finish time and then the total time taken for the algorithm is tf1 minus ti1 that is the finish time minus initial time okay so this will give us the time that was taken by the algorithm to execute okay so then if we have two algorithms so alg1 and let's say algorithm 2 so it's very simple now in this case i can say that okay i take the time for the first algorithm with this process similarly for algorithm 2 i find the initial time start time of the algorithm then run algorithm 2 find its finish time and then get the total time taken by the algorithm as tf2 minus tf1 okay so that looks great okay but is there any problem so we see yeah if you see think deeply so you will find that okay first thing is that we are not even guaranteed that if we run the same algorithm multiple times so will we get the always the same time okay and the other thing is so but we say that okay if we are using this algorithm so we will compare ta1 and ta2 and whichever let's say is taking more time so it's less efficient okay so if i run this 100 times or something and then what I say that okay I find that okay on average TA2 is taking lesser time so this means TA2 is more efficient okay but is it really that's the question so there is a bad guy okay so there is the bad guy what he plans okay so he says that okay you run on your computer your algorithm and I will run my algorithm on my computer okay and then he goes and he puts some extra ram on his computer okay he makes it really fast initially it was 2 gb ram for both of them now he puts something like 4 gb ram or 8 gb ram okay now his computer runs very fast very fast computer he has got now so what happens he runs his algorithm and now even though the fair guy was smarter kid but hit his algo of the bad guy is running much much fast because now what happens his ram is fast it's four times faster than the other guy's ram and he runs the code really fast and says that okay my algorithm time ta2 is much greater than ta1 okay so i win so he wins and fair guy is just thinking what has happened but he realizes no we need to run it on the same machine he says that okay your computer might be more powerful so no that will not work let's have we should run the code or uh, our algorithms on the same machine then it will be better then we can judge okay 
whose code is performing better then bad guy says that okay that is also fine let's try out so what happens now bad guy runs this code and what he does smartly he says that okay i'm running my code on your machine the same machine but what he does so now he is not running any other applications on the computer he closes all the applications just runs his own algorithm okay then what happens when the fair guy the other guy comes what he does he runs his algorithm so algorithm 1 and what the bad guy does is simultaneously runs lot of more applications that are very computation intensive okay so which requires huge amount of computation which will take all the cpu and ram so what he does so his way initially that okay put more ram better cpu so was not allowed but then what he did that okay he runs the same code his algo on the computer but while the other one's algorithm was running so he runs a lot of more applications which require more memory and more computation okay and then again he says that oh see i have one in this case too now fair guy thinks okay what the heck is this so he says that no this is also not fair so now let us have some other provision okay so we will use mathematical analysis so here it's it's not dependent upon anything whatever your code your algorithm will do we will catch it using the mathematical analysis and that's why you see a lot of times so interviewer will ask okay give me the time complexity and that's where the role of big o theta omega notations come okay so now let's see what happens so both were given let's say one problem and the bad guy so he had his algorithm okay so that this is the bad guy algorithm so what he does he doesn't study much algorithm so but he what he does so he was asked that okay so okay so this one is not bad guy but this is the fair guy okay so let's see this code was for the fair guy so this fair guy is quite smart in algorithm and what he does so the question that was asked is the find the sum of the first n natural numbers okay so if like let's say n is 5 so find the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 so what the fair guy who is smarter he does is he just uses the formula the sum of first n natural numbers is n into n plus 1 by 2 and he returns sum okay and now he says that okay now this is my algorithm and the bad guy so he what he does he writes not that compact code okay so he is doing a lot of computations so what he does int s is equal to 0 and then for i is equal to 1 to n what he does he each time he is accumulating the sum s is equal to s plus i and then he returns sum and now they both go to the person who is who will do the analysis of their code and then tell who is better okay so what happens now this one requires so let's analyze the code and let's see how many times each of the lines are executed so this is a declaration so this is executed once okay and then and it doesn't take any cost this is just a declaration so it doesn't take any cost then s is n into n plus 1 by 2 so this has like say one addition one multiplication and one division so let's say exactly it takes three computations plus one for equal so this is four computations and return s so this is one computation okay so this takes and this we can write as constant time so this is o of 1 and this is o of 1 also okay so this algorithm runs in o of one time or we say this is constant time so the complexity of this is just constant time you just execute this line so 
now we come to bad guys code so this is declaration till here it's fine one declaration then he uses a for loop okay so for int i is equal to 1 i is less than equal to n i plus plus so here what happens this let's see how many times will this line be executed so if i is 1 initially so it, this one thing is, is, is executed once and then what happens it will check is i less than equal to n so let's say n is 5 so i is initially 1 so 1 is less than equal to 5 so this check will be done then i plus plus okay so then these this line will be executed okay and then i plus plus and then this line is executed so we see so i is 1 2 3 4 5 so till that this condition this this will be evaluated to be true so this will be executed five times if n is five and then what will happen i plus plus and i will become six so six is now not less than equal to n is equal to five so this will stop so we see this line is executed n plus one times and this line is executed n times okay and this is once so overall what happens this is n plus one plus n plus one Okay. so this is 2n plus 2 times this is executed so these many executions are done so this now becomes o of n okay so this we will see that this is o of n the complexity of this is n order of n and where n is what n is the input size okay n is the input size so how many elements we want to sum up Okay, so here what he did was he became smart and then he used directly the formula so his uh, his algorithm doesn't depend upon the input size it directly finds that value but his algorithm depends upon the input size because the for loop runs that many times and hence it becomes O of n and hence this one will run much faster okay if same conditions is there on the machine okay so this is what is time complexity so it basically means that okay find the number of times the number of executions okay find the number of execution steps okay so and sum them all so in this we saw that okay this is executed n plus one times this is executed n times this is executed one time so we sum them up and we find that okay how many more number of times is which line executed and based on the input size okay so two things that are very important here is the input so first thing is input size so what is the input size and based on that how is your algorithm the number of steps in your algorithm changing so we saw here that if n is let's say 5 then it requires 2 into 5 plus 2 12 steps but if you increase it to let's say number of numbers is 10 so first 10 natural numbers sum if i want to find so it will be 20 plus 2 22 steps you have to execute but here for each one of them it will be just one step okay so that was the difference now let's just see one more piece of code so here we will see about factorial to calculate factorial and what happens here so a factorial of a number is like okay we have to find 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 till into n so that is factorial so 5 factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 to 4 into 5 so 6 into 4 24 into 5 120 so this is 5 factorial okay so first let's see this one algo 2 so what this algorithm does is long factorial int n so what i do long f is 1 and for int i is equal to 1 i is less than equal to n i plus plus okay so this line again we see i starts from 1 it goes to become 2 3 4 it goes till n so it is fine because n is less than equal to n then it becomes n plus 1 and now n plus 1 is not less than equal to n so this line is executed n plus 1 times 
this line is executed f is equal to f into i this is executed n times this is executed one time this is executed one time okay so total this is executed n plus one so one plus n plus one plus n plus one okay so this is two n plus three so this is o of n now let's analyze the running time of this one okay so long factorial int n so if n is less than equal to one so there is a check here so one execution step here then what happens else it goes if n is greater than one then what happens it returns n into factorial of n minus one okay so what happens so here we cannot directly find that okay so let us now we have to find the time complexity for this factorial so let's say that the answer the number of steps that is required to calculate this factorial of n is tn okay tn is equal to number of steps to run f factorial of factorial of n okay so this is the case then what happens i can say that factorial of n it requires tn number of steps so i can write that okay then what happens t of n so every time it will have this check and it will also have return n into so it will have something like one multiplication here so what happens tn is equal to so again we are having t of n minus 1 okay so this is the number required so this is one step and so tn is tn minus 1 and plus 1 for the check okay so this is the recurrence relation that we get so what happens now and if t of 1 is what so it is 1 and t of 0 is also 1 okay so now what happens i can say that okay tn is equal to tn minus 1 can be written as tn minus 2 and plus 1 plus 1 so this is tn minus 1 i can write as tn minus 2 plus 1 so this becomes tn is tn minus 2 plus 2 okay this can be tn minus 2 can be written as tn minus 3 plus 1 plus 2 so this is t of n minus 3 plus 3 so similarly i can write it is equal to t of n minus n minus 1 plus n minus 1 which is equal to t of 1 plus n minus 1 and t of 1 we know is 1 plus n minus 1 so it is n okay so this means tn is equal to n so n steps are required here so this is also even though the structure of the code this is using recursion okay but again it takes the same amount of time to solve so these two algorithms in exponential time so they are o of n where n is the input size okay huh? the factorial of which number you want so this is about the analyzing or finding the running time of algorithm so this is the basic so next time we will in the next lecture we will learn about calculating running time for various different algorithms so i hope you enjoyed this lecture so please share this video among your friends and make it your favorite thanks a lot